Good morning. I love that movie. That is such a great movie. So what's the point of that clip? We need each other. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie um, Castaway. How many of you have ever seen Castaway with uh, Tom Hanks? Have you seen that movie? So I had a weird thought, and I think, I, I, I don't know if somebody else said it, <clears throat> and it made me think about it. What is this called, by the way? A bag, yes. But what kind of bag is it? Bath and Body Work bag, but what kind of bag is it in general? Gift bag. Thank you so much, Brian. You get an extra nickel. All right. So here's the deal. This is a gift bag. So uh, if you watch um, Tom Hanks in uh, Castaway, he opens all these packages that wash on the shore, but then he has one package that he does not open, right? And so his point of doing that was it would give him the will to live to go back and give it to somebody. Now, what if... When he got to the girl's house, right, it was a lady who's an artist or something, he gets to her house and he hands it to her and she opens it in front of him and it is a solar satellite phone, right? Or a lighter or anything useful, right? Because he ended up with like skate, ice skates and I'm trying to think of what else he found, right? So many things that were just useless, right? And, and just very hard to use. And what if it had been something he really could use? Listen, and he didn't open it. The movie would be over faster, by the way. But also, we don't really think about that. But here's the thing for you. You ready? God has given you a gift. And it could be that you're thinking, well, nobody needs this. Or... I tried helping one time, but, and you fill in the blank with whatever your but is, and uh, that sounded bad. It didn't, it didn't mean to. But today we're going to talk about three truths at Surfside Community Fellowship and why we use our gifts for each other, to encourage each other. Because here's the thing, because you might be the very gift that God uses, don't withhold what God has given you as a gift. You know, too many times in churches, we're doing gifts tests and we're helping people to discover their gifts. And really, can I tell you, in the Bible, the focus isn't even as much on the gifts themselves. You know what it's on? Serving and being a blessing to other people and going out of our way. And so I'm praying today that you'll understand what a vital part you are because you may think you don't matter. And I'm praying today that you'll learn to pray for each other and that you'll use God's, the gifts God's given you. All right, so number one, our differences multiply our impact. And we're picking up, I told you this earlier, in 1 Corinthians. And we're going to pick up in chapter 12. And here it is. Paul says, just as a body, though one, has many parts. But all of its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. Time out. Okay, i got to tell you this because it's important. I mean, everything in Scripture is important, but you need to understand this context-wise. You have to understand when in Corinth there were lots of very wealthy people. Corinth was a wealthy community. It, was also, it also made Las Vegas look like church. Okay? So morally they had issues. But here's what began to happen in the church. People would come to church and wealthy people would divide themselves from poor people. Greeks would divide themselves from Jews. Slaves would divide themselves or vice versa from free people. And so you had all these divisions in the church. And Paul says to the early church that shouldn't be. And listen to what it says next. It says, and we were all given the same spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part but of many. See, we tend to compare ourselves with others, and Billy Graham said we compare our strengths to other people's weaknesses, and it makes us prideful, right? I can't believe they did that. What a dummy, right? Or we compare our weaknesses to someone else's strength, and what do we do with that? Oh, man, I, why do I even try, right? And so, any time we do either of those things, we're out of balance. In Corinth, you have to realize what was going on. There were divisions. Each group was saying, I like this pastor. I like that pastor. They made a big deal out of it. Um, they, they were selfish in even how they did the Lord's Supper. 
They were partying in the parking lot before coming. People were coming into church drunk before the Lord's Supper. They're like, I didn't bring any wine with us today. So I don't know what we're going to use, right? And so they're just, they're taking everything and just becoming selfish and self-centered. And Paul is saying, it's not about you. And too often, can I, can I be real honest with you as a pastor? Because it's me. Too often, I think I'm a consumer. I think, how can you serve me in church? And the truth is, when it comes to church, it should not be like Amazon. Bring me stuff right now. Let me push a button. One click. You better give me the price I want when I want it. And yet, what happens? We have to remember that we're a part of the body. So God has gifted you. And the enemy's going to look at two things in your life. He's either going to make you arrogant, thinking, well, I can't believe that would happen. And so you won't use your gifts because you're better than those other people. Or, more likely, and so often... They don't need me. I don't matter. Nobody cares. It's not a big deal. I tried helping once and they wouldn't, or 12 times, and that would. Listen, your gift is from God, and so you don't have to answer to the pastor. Did you know that? Isn't that good news? You don't have to answer to the pastor about your gift. I will never manipulate you to try to get you to use your gifts. But one day, <laughs> you have to answer to God. And see, we sometimes think that things aren't important. and. Okay, let me tell you what it's like to have part of the body. So yesterday, I had to cut down a tree that was about to fall on the road because I, I didn't really want to, but I was looking and I'm like, you know, if someone dies today, I'll feel bad. So maybe I'll... So I went down and I just basically just wanted to cut the tree down and get it out of the road. So I'm out there and my neighbor hears the tree fall. Now my neighbor is probably watching this morning on TV. He hears the tree fall and I think he's thinking two things. He told me one thing he was thinking. He didn't tell me the other. So the first thing he says, I, I heard a tree crack. I thought maybe a tree fell. And I can think as he came towards me, he thought, is, is the pastor dead? Because the tree hit the ground and made that awful noise that trees make when they hit the ground. And he came over. And so I'm talking to him about this and we're laughing. And as I'm standing there, all of a sudden... You know, I hadn't thought about my feet all morning. Not, I, I, they hadn't even crossed my mind. And I look down. And evil fire ants are attacking my feet and my shoes. And by the way, this morning I noticed again. I can tell you every place they bit my feet. And of course, I did the fire ant dance. Right? It's not an FSU dance. It's a fire ant dance. And... And right, brush them off. And guess what? I paid no attention to my feet. But as soon as that happened, guess what became priority? My discussion with my neighbor was like, hang on, fire ants. And he knew we're not going to have a conversation for a couple minutes here because we're doing the fire ant dance. Pastor shouldn't be using those words, right? Or whatever he thought. All right, so, so here's the deal. That's not true. So here's the deal, though. You don't pay attention to, to parts of your body until they hurt, Right? You know, this morning I noticed, what did I do yesterday that my back hurts? Oh, right? And you notice. And as you get older, by the way, you, you, you're like snapping pops, right? Right? Snack, crackle, pop used to be a cereal, and now it's you. Right? And you notice what when they hurt. Here's the thing. You are a part of the body of Christ. You may think, I'm not a big deal, but you are a big deal. Because there are people that you will minister to that nobody ministers to. There are neighbors that you have that I will never meet, but you are Jesus with skin on to them. If you work in a cubicle, it could be the person next door to you. If you go to a, a class about knitting, had to have the knitting joke. If you go to a class about knitting, the other people that go. If you're involved in a small group, those people need you and need the gifts that you have. And so here's your first challenge. We discover our vital part of the body. See, the enemy's going to tell you you don't matter. He's going to tell you you're not important. He's going to tell you that you're not needed. And he will give you every excuse. It's as bad as me at the McDonald's drive through When I think, I will eat something healthy. I will eat something healthy. I will eat something healthy. Yeah, but they got that one on sale. And you know, you're extra hungry today, so supersize, that's in the menu. And just do a Diet Coke, that'll cut down the, right? And every excuse just pops out. Listen, you think the enemy does not want you to serve? He doesn't. 
And so what? he'll plant thoughts in your mind. He'll make you hate other people. He'll make you frustrated by the smallest things. He'll make churches petty and things that don't really matter will become a big deal. And that's why Paul says to the early church, hey, quit dividing yourselves over all of these dumb things. None of them matter. By the way, did you figure out what the news wanted you to be mad about this week? Every week, they want you to be mad about something. You're worried about something. Maybe there's going to be a button pushed. I got two words for you. This might be nuclear war, okay? So here's the thing, right? That's what they're telling you. And so if you got that joke, you were paying attention this week. All right. Listen to this quote by Spurgeon so many years ago and so true. Listen to this. Satan always hates Christian fellowship. It's his policy to keep Christians apart. Anything which can divide saints from one another, he delights in. Since union is strength, he does his best to promote separation. He'll do anything to divide you. He'll do anything to keep you home. He'll do anything to keep you away from other believers. Because when you get with other believers, remember what Jesus prayed, that our love for one another would show others Jesus. So if he can keep us apart, you can't love people if you're never around them. You can think you love them, but if you never see them, never talk to them, never go out of your way for them, do you really love them? Love's a verb, remember? DC Talk told us that years ago. All right, so our difference is multiplier impact. Number two, we don't compare and quit. And I was trying to think, you know, what video would help with this? And so we're going to show you one. We're going to show you it a few times because it's hard to catch. And one more time for effect. Now, here's the problem with comparison. Isn't that awesome? By the way, you can do that with dogs. I don't know if you know that. Please don't do that. That poor dog. You're... You can find out whether your dog's smart or not. If you do that and he just looks at you, then you're like, mm, not that bright. But there's videos all online about dogs doing that. They act like the, the toy dies and the dog won't touch whatever it is. It's really funny. So, so why does the dog do that? Because he sees something and he compares himself to the stuffed animal that just died. And he says, oh no, I'm not doing that. Listen, the enemy wants you to compare yourself to other people to say they've got it better or I've got it better. or I can't believe they did that. Why? To divide you from other people. That's all he does. They want you to judge everyone. Listen, you know, let me give you this crazy news cycle. During the queen's funeral, we were supposed to judge her children. And if you didn't catch that in some of the interviews and stuff you missed it Just, has anybody in here met the queen's children anybody in here friends with them know them at all ever had two words with them no so you're supposed to from a distance watch them and decide on whether you're happy approve or disapprove all the time that's what we're creating and here's the deal it seeps into the church and we go home going, well, the pastor's sermon was about a seven today. I don't know, about a three. I worry about this. You know, he said this, and I think about that. And you know the music, I <laughs> and do all those announcements. And boy, Rodney, his hair is extra big today. Or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, I had to, had to go with that. So, and isn't it funny? We just are so busy just critiquing everything. Listen, if you're serving other people, you don't have time to sit and critique them all the time. If you're really serving other people, you're not going to be walking around going, Ugh. now, you might be a, a Martha where, you're, where you go around, you go, I don't know why everybody is not serving like me. We'll go back to point one, but we're going to skip. All right. So here we go. Verse 15. Let's pick it up. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, would, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an, oh, sorry, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body, but God has put the part, excuse me, put the body together. And this word in the Greek means poured it together. He's poured the body together. And what he's saying is, be careful of these comparisons where you think, well, if I'm not up on stage or if I'm not doing what that person's doing, then what I'm doing is not as important. Nay, nay. You have neighbors. You have friends, you have family 
that no one else has, that you should be praying for, you should be praying about, and you should be looking for opportunities. God, would you show me how to use the gifts you've given me? For some of you, your gift is being able to encourage somebody. For some of you, your gift is to be able to bring somebody soup. For some of you, it's to, to write a card. For some of you, it's to just go out of your way to look for those opportunities. Some of you have gifts of service. You know how to cut down trees. You know how to mow a yard. You know how to... There's so many gifts that we use to just show people we care about you, we love you, and you show them God's love. But then it continues. It says, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so there should be no division in the body, but that the parts should have equal concern for each other. Now listen to this last sentence, and I'm going to give you an illustration. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored... Every part rejoices with it. And that means in the middle of the night, you have not thought of your pinky toe in so long. You, you did not get up in the morning and go, good morning, pinky toe. You haven't thought about that pinky toe in forever. Until in the middle of the night, barefoot, you're walking across the house. And the, I promise you, that piece of furniture jumped out and caught your toe. And then suddenly, guess what? That toe becomes the focus of your life, right? Ah. Uh, right and 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 or if you find a lego on the floor suddenly that foot becomes a right and and so what is it these unimportant things become important so recognize this if you serve god there are going to be times that that as you're serving you're going to feel unimportant like you don't matter but you are making a huge difference and you never know where the smallest act that you do, the thing you go out of the way for, and most likely the very thing that you feel like doesn't matter. It's the very thing that God might use, the very gift that God might use to help somebody, you ready for this, find their way home. And it may be you that has that gift and you're withholding it. You've got the solar cell phone, the solar satellite phone, and you're saying, nah, Listen to this next verse. Put on the full armor of God. Now, now I'm going to come back to why this has to do with this other. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. And that word means tricks. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers in this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This morning, one of my pastor friends texted me, and he's been struggling in an area and struggling with a person. And so he's telling me this is what's going on. And he said to me, but I recognize my struggle is not with a person. My struggle is with the enemy that wants to divide and wants to get me focused on the wrong things and wants me to, to look and, and always be looking down. Unlike Nehemiah, who said, I can't come down. I'm doing something important. And too often we allow the enemy to affect us and to harm us. And so what does he say? He says, be aware, take your stand. That means pay attention to the devil's tricks. The devil's going to make you think, what I'm doing doesn't matter. Nobody appreciates it. I might as well quit. What I have doesn't matter. But the truth is, as long as you have breath, God has given you a gift, as minor as you may think it is, that can be used to bless others. Remember, you're not fighting other believers. You're fighting an enemy who wants to divide you, who wants to plant seeds in your mind all the time. Oh, I can't believe. And that's what he does. And by the way, if you're not careful, he'll use you to divide. He'll use you to be the one to, to put a wedge between other people. And so you have to pay attention. So what do we do instead? We pray for and we protect each other. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. That word for covers means protects. It means, you know, if you're married, you don't go out telling everybody what your spouse did. Oh, they're so stupid. By the way, if you talk that way about your spouse, counseling is open. Come see me. All right. Number three, we use our gifts as part of the team. Now, you may not follow basketball at all, and that's okay if you don't. Every once in a while, somebody come to me and tell me a reason they don't follow basketball. And I say, great. I still like basketball, so because uh, uh, I can't play it. I'm three feet tall, but I love to see guys who can. And so, and so, but one of my favorite stories is the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, Eric, that's weird that that's your favorite story. Yeah, yeah, because they drafted every awesome player in the league. 
and lost. Lost bad. Lost lots of games. Were defeated. Well, Eric, why is that your favorite story? That's so weird. Because here's what I know. Teamwork is so much more important than how important you think you are. And God would rather have a humble group of people than one superstar or ten superstars who know how to do everything. He'll use ten people who are humble to advance his kingdom. It seems like there were eleven disciples that kind of did that, right? And so God does that. Now, let me just say this real quick too. Uh, just look around for a second. It's kind of a weird thing to do during church, but look around. Some of you fell asleep, so wake that person up. Poke them. Carl, poke Carl. All right. Look around for a second, and here's what I want you to realize. We have some wonderful service and servant-hearted people in this room. I, I know so many of you not only serve here, and I see that, but you serve other places, and I see it. And we are super blessed with a ton of humble people who don't ask for any notice, who don't make a big deal out of serving. They just serve behind the scenes and quietly. And those are the kind of people, and listen, you are the kind of church that God uses and that matters. In 1 Corinthians 12, he continues, Now you are the body of Christ, and each of you are a part of it, and God is placed in the church. And then he goes through, first of all, apostles and prophets, teachers, miracles, gift of healing, of helping, guidance, different kind of tongues. And then he says this, Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? And by the way, the answer is, Nay, nay. You don't all do the same things. And then he says this. Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. What are the greater gifts? Everything you do with love. That's why he says, and yet I'll show you the most excellent way. See, you thought Bill and Ted were the first one that said that. Most excellent. And what's the most excellent way? Then he goes into, if you go to a wedding, you've heard this. If I speak in the tongue of men and of angels, but do not have love, I'm the gong show. Right? And what's he saying? He's saying, you may have all these gifts, but if you don't use them in love, guess what? Doesn't matter. It's not important. But I'm doing so many things. Doesn't matter. You're not doing it in love. You're doing it out of purpose. You're doing it so people can recognize you. You're doing it for whatever reason. But when you do it with love, guess what? It matters. It may, that's the most excellent way for all of us. In Ephesians 6, Paul continues, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kind of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So the final thing we challenge to do, we serve and pray for other people. Because here's the deal. When you're serving and when you're praying for other people, you get a right perspective. Because when you're praying for other people, instead of judging them, God begins to put things on your heart. So a few weeks ago, one of our ladies said, I want to start a mom's ministry. That's what God's put on our heart. A few months ago, somebody said, I want to start a card writing ministry. I want to do Christmas boxes for, for people in other countries. That God puts that on people's heart. And as he does that, why does he do that? Because we're praying for other people. So pray for other people. And then ask God to reveal to you what part should you have in using your gift to help them where nobody else can help them. You were put there for a purpose. You were given a gift. Don't hold on to it. Don't keep it in the package. <laughs> Give it away. And if you do that with love, the Bible promises that God will use it and people will come home to him. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that. I'd love to talk to you after the service about what it means that Jesus died and rose again to pay for our sins. And how when we surrender our lives to him, knowing that, that he takes our sin and replaces it with his righteousness. If you're a Christian and you're here today and you've got a gift you've been holding on to or a bad attitude or whatever, hey, confess it, make it right, and ask God to use you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time today. I pray that you'd bless each one here. Lord, I pray too that you would help us to use our gifts. Lord, I know the enemy comes to steal and kill and destroy. And so, Lord, we rebuke the enemy, the things that he tries to do, the schemes that he has. We pray that, Father, you would make us very aware of his schemes. And, Lord, that as Christians we would rise up and put on the armor of Jesus to stand against the things he tries to do, not just in us, but in our families. 
Father, I pray too for that one today who doesn't know you, that today would be the day they come home to you. Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name.